It's truly an honor, and it's a big day for me because my husband who's sitting right there, this is the first time he's ever watching me do what I actually do for a living. <laughs> so let's start. So my presentation today is targeting the chemokine receptor CXCR4 in B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Uh, and I'm, I, I did my PhD, I finished it last month from University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. So the acute lymphoblastic leukemia, roughly about five to 6,000 patients are diagnosed annually in the USA. And it is the most uh, frequent childhood malignancy in uh, kids. So about 80% of all pa pediatric leukemias are BALLs, and about 25% of all childhood cancers, that's a big number, that's a quarter of all childhood cancers, that is ALL. Also 20% of all adult uh, acute leukemias are ALLs. So uh, in response to chemotherapy, because we have such good chemotherapy regimens and we have improved them over uh, several years, we have been able to achieve 80% long-term disease-free survival in pediatric ALL, which is really good. But then this falls to about 30 to 40% in adults, and, uh, and this is disease-free survival. And then for patients who have relapse, it's even worse. Uh, some studies show 30 to 40% overall survival rate for uh, patients with relapse, but in some studies, it's as low as 5%, which is so the principal cause of treatment failure and relapse is uh, chemotherapy resistance and minimum residual disease. So this is the, m this is the biggest problem faced by physicians right now. Uh, it's that uh, cells are left behind after chemotherapy and cancer comes back, which is relapse. So what is minimal residual disease basically? When you get uh, leukemia and you get chemotherapy, the cells, the cancer cells that are left behind in the bone marrow, basically that is the minimal residual disease. So the bone marrow, how it, pro uh, how it does this is it provides uh, drug resistance to leukemia cells. And it does so through the CXCL12, CXCR4 pathway. Uh, this pathway regulates the bone marrow homing of leukemia cells by mediating their migration and adhesion. So in this diagram, you can see that uh, both uh, normal and malignant uh, progen lymphoid progenitor cells will use this pathway to home to their bone marrow niches. And so this niche works in two ways. Firstly, firstly it's, it physically shields the leukemia cells from chemotherapy, and uh, so the chemotherapy can, cannot reach the cancer cells in the bone marrow. Secondly, it provides a nurturing environment through survival signals. There's both surf surface bound and secreted factors that give a very good survival advantage to the cells that are in the bone marrow. So uh, this effect, that I've shown here that the cells migrate to their bone marrow niche is mimicked in vitro by a process called pseudoemporipolasis. Here I would like to mention that uh, we had a system of co-culture where we co-cultured bone marrow stromal cells and leukemia cells. Uh, and the advantage of this co-culture co system is that the bone marrow stroma cells, they, are, uh, they stick to the uh, culture dish. And the leukemia cells, they are in suspension. So it's very easy to differentiate between the leukemia cells and the stroma cells. So on the left here, you can see that this, uh, this picture shows stroma cells alone. But when you co-culture these uh, stroma cells with leukemia cells, what these leukemia cells do is they migrate beneath the stroma. So PEP, and that process is called PEP. It's an in vitro phenomenon which is dependent on CXCR4 and leukemia cells spontaneously migrate beneath the bone marrow cells. So this is, uh, this is an exact replica of what I was talking about previously that cells home to their bone marrow niches. And we have used this co-culture co setting in all our experiments to quantify various things that I'll uh, go into later. So considering all the above uh, information, uh, we hypothesize that if we, if we inhibit CXCR4, we may, may sensitize ALL cells to chemotherapy because CXCR4 mediates ALL cell homing and retention in the bone marrow niches. So we, have th we had three aims for our study. The so first was obviously to study the expression and uh, uh, function of CXCR4 in BLL. The next aim for us was to see the role of CXCR4 in this co-culture setting, uh, in the stroma-mediated drug resistance. And, and the third one was to see the importance of CXCR4 in in vivo leukemia progression. So in the first aim, uh, the first thing that we do, did was we took uh, a panel of BLL cell lines and we tested, uh, I think, about five chemokine receptors 
on them. And then after measuring the expression, we went on to quantify the functional response of CXCR4 stimulation. So this is, uh, this is when we measured the CXCR4 expression. The left uh, graph shows CXCR4 expression in, in cell lines, and the right one is xenograft expanded primary cells. So we can see that CXCR4 is positive in both the primary cells and the cell lines, and it's pretty much a plus minus situation where CXCR4 is the uh, chemokine receptors that's expressed and the rest of them are either absent or very, at very low levels, which this is the first indication of how important CXCR4 is for leukemia because it, it is the only receptor that is present in such high levels. So then we went on to the uh, functional assays for CXCR4. Uh, we did two functional assays. The first one was chemotaxis, which uh, basically is, it's a linear assay for measuring uh, migration of leukemia cells to CXCL12. The second one was the PEP assay. As I showed the picture before, we have developed this assay in our lab to quantify how many cells go, uh, go and migrate beneath the stroma. Uh, we did these assays with the help of two uh, CXCR4 inhibitors, plurixifor, which is a small molecule inhibitor, and a BKT140, which is a peptide inhibitor. So now I'm gonna show you the results. This slide shows the results of the chemotaxis assays that we did. And uh, this is how we did it. This is a brief workflow. Uh, so it was done uh, with the help of transwell chambers in which uh, in the top chamber we had BLL cells and, the, and in the bottom chamber we had CXCL12 in fax buffer. So after plating this, we allowed migration for three hours and then counted them in the flow cytometer. Uh, so this is how we can quantify. So in each graph, the above graph is for the cell lines and the graph on the bottom is for xenograft expanded primary cells. Uh, the black bar is the control, and you can see for each cell line tested, there was a significant reduction in chemotaxis uh, when CXCR4 was inhibited. And this was seen for both cell lines and for xenograft expanded primary cells. The next assay, the, as I said before, was the PEP assay. We have devised this in our cells. So basically what we do is we co-culture the leukemia cells with the bone marrow stroma, and then we uh, allow migration for four hours. After the four hours, we wash the wells to uh, get rid of the cells in the supernatant, and then we, trips, uh, we uh, trypsinize the layer and uh, count it in flow cytometer to quantify it. Again, the graph above is for the cell lines, and below is xenograft expanded primary cells. Uh, black bar is the control where leukemia cells are co-cultured with the stroma without any drug treatment. And we can see with Prixophore and BKT140, there is significant reduction in also PEP. And this is seen both in primary cells and cell lines. So after uh, the pharmacological model of CXR4 inhibition, uh, because uh, these drugs, Plurixifor is not completely an antagonist. It's also, uh, it is classified as an inverse agonist, so it can have a, a basal activation of signaling. So we wanted to confirm if the, this effect is because of pharmacological, uh, some other effects, or is it just because of CXCR4? So we created a genetic deletion model of ALL. And we use the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing system for that. Uh, so basically what CRISPR-Cas9 is, is that it, it is short RNA molecules that go and bind to the target uh, sequence in the genome. And this RNA mo molecule will then uh, recruit the Cas9 nuclease. Uh, and this Cas9 will produce a double end break in the target DNA. This double end uh, break in the target DNA will be then repaired by the non-homologous end joining DNA repair system which is endogenous to the human mammalian cells. Uh, this produces a frame shift mutation and, and this whole process then results in a lack of expression of the target protein. So this is a brief workflow of how we created the knockout cell lines. Uh, here you can see this is the wild type cell line with very high expression of CXCR4. When we transfect the CRISPR-Cas9 plasmid in it, we get a ten, tiny 10% 10 population of CXCR4 negative cells. And then what we did was we used a magnetic sorting uh, to negatively select the CXCR4 knockout cells, and we did two rounds of magnetic sorting to achieve a completely negative population of CXCR4 knockout cells. Then uh, we did the functional assays, and again we saw that uh, without any drug treatment, both chemotaxis and PEP were uh, significantly reduced uh, by knocking out CXCR4 in both NAM6 and TNUI. The black bars is control, the wild type cells, and the gray bars is uh, the knockout cells. 
So then we went on to the second aim of our study, which was to test the role of CXCR4 in the co-culture setting. So, uh, so first of all, we wanted to see the effect of bone marrow stroma on drug-induced cytotoxicity of these cells. Then we wanted to see what happens when we inhibit CXCR4 in this same setting. So this is, uh, this is the experiment that we did. We wanted to see, so we wanted to see what is the adhesion-dependent and adhesion-independent effect of bone marrow stroma on leukemia cells. So this, this dot plot right here, this uh, quadrant shows living cells. So this is leukemia cells with dexamethasone. And we use three drugs, cyclophosphamide, dexamethasone, and vincristine, which is the frontline therapy for ALL. Uh, so in the control, when we uh, expose leukemia cells to the drug, we get about 50% uh, viable cells at 48 hours. But when we put it in co-culture with the bone marrow stroma, we see that uh, at 48 hours, there's a rescue. So instead of 54, there's 70% of living cells. That means the bone marrow stroma is providing a resistance uh, to leukemia cells. So the next question was, what happens to the cells that have gone below the bone marrow stroma? So what I did was I trypsinized the layer and I, I harvested the cells that were sitting beneath the stroma and I measured viability. And these cells are completely resistant to any kind of drug you put in them. So their viability is 95%. And this we saw in all three drugs. So the black bars in all graphs is the leukemia cells with only the drug. This, the middle bar, is uh, we see a rescue. This is in the supernatant uh, of the bone marrow co-culture. And the third bar is where we see the cells that are migrated beneath, and they are completely resistant to any kind of treatment. So uh, then in the co-culture setting, I wanted to see what happens if I add CXCR4 inhibitors. So again, in each bar, uh, in each graph, you can see that the black bar, this is, the, we stain for propidium iodide and DIOC6 to measure viability of these cells. Uh, so the, the black bar is an, uh, leukemia cells with only the drug. The second bar is in co-culture with the bone marrow, we see a rescue. And the last two bars, the last one is not visible, but, but you can kind, kind of see the error bar, so it can give you an indication. Uh, and when we added, the last two bars are with the CXCR4 inhibitor. We can see that when we added Perixa4 and BKD140, the leukemia cells were sensitized to uh, chemotherapy. And uh, there was no longer, the bone marrow could no longer give the leukemia cells uh, uh, the ability to be resistance, resistant to chemotherapy. So now that we had generated a CXCR4 knockout model, we can use it for so many different experiments. So I wanted to know what happens if I put these knockout cells in co-culture with the bone marrow stroma. So again, as we can see here, the black bars in both the graphs are uh, uh, Leukemia cell, wild type leukemia cells. So you can see this bar right here. This is leukemia cells only with the drug alone. So when you put it in co-culture, you see a rescue. And here with Wilkristine as well, you see the same thing. Leukemia cells with the drug, and there's a rescue when they are put in co-culture with the bone marrow. However, with the gray bars, you can see that these are the knockout cells. And you can see that there is no significant rescue for the knockout cells in co-culture which again gives us an indication that CXCR4 is a major mechanism used by the leukemia cells to uh, extract resistance from the bone marrow stroma. Again, uh, the next question was, because the bone marrow stroma is such a, a dynamic, complex environment, there is so many factors in play, what if there is something else at play and we are thinking it's CXCR4? So we wanted to eliminate the uh, whole complexity of the bone marrow co-culture and we wanted to, so what I did was, instead of the bone marrow co-culture, I only put CXCL12, the ligand of CXCR4, in the experiment. So, so this was kind of, we made a linear experiment where there was nothing else but CXCL12, and it gave us the exact same graph. So here you can see the black bar with uh, leukemia cells and drug. When you put CXCL12, there is a rescue, and with the addition of CXCR4 inhibitors, the cells are again sensitized. Uh, again, this is an indication that the chemo resistance uh, by CXCR4 is dependent, is adhesion independent because CXCL12 alone is doing it. So then in, in our third aim, we wanted to see, because we had generated the knockout cell lines, the next obvious thought process would be, let's see what happens when you put it into mice. So when we did the mice experiment, we had two groups of mice, and we, in which we, in one group we put the wild type cells, in the other group we put the knockout cells. So we did bioluminescent imag imaging weekly after the injection, and we sacrificed three mice per group, uh, three weeks after the injection, and analyzed the bone marrow, spleen, and liver. And we also did survival analysis. 
This, is, this was the simplest experiment, two groups of mice, inject cells, no treatment, nothing. And we can see that even without any treatment, the left two columns are mice uh, that were injected with wild-type leukemia cells. Uh, and th these are NSG mice. And the right two columns are mice that were injected with CXCR4 knockout cells. And we can see that even with the naked eye, we can see that there's a significant reduction in bi bioluminescent imaging in the mice that were injected with CXCR4 knockout cells. Uh, the same thing is quantified here, where we can see the red line is the knockout uh, mice, and the blue line is the wild-type mice. And we can see there is a significant reduction in a tumor burden in the knockout mice. Then what we did was we analyzed the leukemia cells in the blood and the bone marrow. So here we can see this dot plot right here. Uh, this is in the bone marrow at day 17. The left dot plot represents CXCR4 wild type mice. Uh, the, these cells are the cell, are leukemia cells because they were GFP positive. So we can see that there is a significant reduction when the CXCR4 gene is knocked out of the leukemia cells. Uh, and this is just a representation. We did three mice, and they're represented here. And we can see there is, there is a highly significant reduction in leukemia cells in the bone marrow. We also saw a significant reduction in leukemia cells uh, in the blood, which is shown right here. Then we, we did the survival curve for these mice that were injected with the CXCR4 wild type and knockout cells. So we saw that mice injected with the CXCR4 knockout BLL cells have significantly longer survival, which is shown here in the blue line, which is the wild-type cells, uh, which have died before the knockout cell. This survival benefit might be modest, but uh, my hypothesis is that this is without any chemotherapy treatment. If and when you add, the next experiment in this line would be to add chemotherapy to this experiment, and my... I, my hypothesis is that this gap would widen when you add chemotherapy to this experiment. But ev the, even without any chemotherapy, there is a significant increase in survival. So in conclusion, CXCR4 inhibition, as it, it, it is a two-pronged effect. First, it inhibits physical shielding of leukemia cells by bone marrow because it, it brings out the cells from the bone marrow. Secondly, even as, as we have seen in our adhesion independent experiments, it sensitizes leukemia cells to chemotherapy. So I think these two effects are very important. And then our data suggests that uh, CXCR4 can be a valuable target in BLL, and uh, it, it is a target worth exploring. So. Thank you. I would like to thank Dr. Berger, whose lab I completed my PhD in, and all the collaborators, and also Global Cancer Summit. Thank you. Mm -hmm.